Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Ollie. First off, I hope you all had a really good Christmas and a very happy new year. I know I did, and I hope you all did too. Uh, just a few quick things before we start off. Um, first, off first off, I'm using Camtasia Studio, which means that I'm recording full screen on my laptop. So I will be uploading this in 720p and full screen, so to see the code you'll need to go into full screen and uh, select 720p. Uh, I assume most people can stream videos in 720 but if it's a real problem for a lot of people then I'm gonna switch back to the old uh, small screen recording so you can just view it in the small window. Um, also I have a new mic, uh, I hope it's better, let me just adjust it quickly. I hope it's better than my previous one because I used to use my Turtle Beach headsets to record um, but they kind of broke so now I'm using this one. Uh, there might be a slight buzzing sound, there was when I was testing it, but it's really quiet and it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect you very much. Um, but one final thing before we start is that this is a new series uh, where I make tutorials that you guys suggest to me. And um, no. Okay. Anyways, um, basically, I was speaking to someone who watches my tutorials, and they were saying to me that uh, my tutorials, like the intermediate series, uh, I'm basically teaching you very linear things. I'm not really, I'm not really showing you much new stuff. We're sort of we're all working towards the exact same thing very kind of uh, in a straight line and there's not much space for you to edit it or go off and do your own thing so what I plan to do with this is teach you various techniques and aspects of game development and then hopefully you can take those and then actually use it to build a proper game uh, so basically you will take away from this as much as you want so now that that's out of the way we can finally start and this tutorial, let me just check the time, 2 minute 30 intro, not too bad. Uh, this tutorial we're going to be doing uh, sprite sheets, which is someone suggested to me a while back, and I decided to do them because they are relatively easy to do, and when you, they are very useful for um, building uh, games, so you don't have to have hundreds and hundreds of images. Uh, now building, drawing your own sprite sheets is quite hard, I've grabbed this one off the internet, uh, just of uh, Super Mario, just eight different slides of him all in one image. Uh, you guys can obviously draw your own. Uh, what I would say is if you draw your own, make sure to kind of keep every uh, thing equal. Kind of build it in tiles, kind of tiles of like 10 by 10 or 20 by 20, and make sure those are even because otherwise it's going to make it a bit harder to uh, get sprites neatly off of your off of the sprite sheet. So I'm going to stop this annoying message because I don't think my computer's running slowly, but whatever. Uh, so I just have a main class here, and that's another thing. I'm going to be sort of teaching you how to build these individual classes, and we're going to be not doing much work on the main class because that immediately restricts you to using that main class. So you can take these individual classes away and then you can apply them to your own games. So uh, we'll be using that main class later, but uh, that's my sprite sheet image right there. If I create a new class, you guys can create a new project called whatever you want, and then I'm going to make a new class called sprite sheet. Sprite sheet. And this is going to be, this is going to hold our sprite sheet in a buffered image and it's going to initialize it basically, pretty simple. And it's going to have, this is only going to have one method, this class, which is going to be to grab the sprite, which will return a buffered image. So public sprite sheet, which is the constructor. And then we're also going to have a public buffered image, which is an awesome, the buffered image class is awesome. If you ever, um, I don't know, if you ever have the time, just go type in buffered image, make a new object, and then you know when you do the kind of dot and it gives you suggestions. 
Sorry, I had to answer my phone. I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, so we're creating a public buffered image, which is going to be the sprite sheet. So we will call it as such, sprite sheet. And then the sprite sheet constructor is going to take a buffered image, um, which will be the sprite sheet. So we're basically initializing the buffered image. And that is simple as that. And in a second, we're going to create a buffered image loader class because um, it's a little bit fiddly to load buffered images, so we're going to make a class to make it nice and easy. So we're going to make another method, public buffered image, to return a buffered image called grab sprite. And this is going to grab a sprite from the sprite sheet um, based on um, an x and y coordinate of the image and then a width and a height. So as such, we're going to make an int x, int y, int width, and int height will be the parameters for this method. And then we can say a buffered image called sprite is equal to the sprite sheet dot get sub image. This is that method right here. And it takes x, y, width, and height as the parameters. And that is pretty much simple as that. And then we return the sprite. So that is our sprite sheet class built, basically. Feel free to add more methods if you think of any. Um, we're now going <coughs> to, excuse me, we're now going to create a buffered image loader class. So we're going to call it that buffered image loader. And delete these comments. And this is going to be a pretty simple, straightforward class. Um, we don't need a constructor. All we need is public void or public buffered image. And it's going to be called load image. And we need to import buffered image. Oh yeah, someone asked me how you import things quickly. And in NetBeans, basically, all you do is press Alt and Enter at the same time. And then it comes up with that little menu. That is when you're doing it over an underlined red thing. Underlined red uh, piece of code. And then you select options. And in Eclipse, I believe you hold the mouse over it for about a second or two. And then it pops up. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I use NetBeans over Eclipse. Because um, doing the importing and error checking is far quicker by doing alt and enter rather than holding your mouse over it. Um, so yeah, anyways. Uh, so in the load image thing, we're going to create a method or a parameter, sorry, string. And the string is going to be the path relative to this a very descriptive string name. And that string is basically what it says. It's going to be the path of the image relative to this class and it's going to return that image and that basically means we can in this case we can literally write sprite sheet png we don't need to go uh, users slash Oliver slash whatever and go all through that so we're going to create a URL first of all called URL and that's equal to this dot get class dot get resource and that's that and we import URL and then we say a buffered image called img or whatever you want to call it is equal to um, image IO built in another built-in image class from Java image IO dot read and then URL as the input and we, oh yeah, of course, we're going to throw, throw and throws. What's the difference between the two? I guess throw is used in uh, single lines. Anyway, I've lost my train of thought again. Uh, what are we doing? All right, so throws, IO exception. And we import the IO exception? Yes, we do. Okay, so now we can return that image, return IMG, and that has loaded the image for us successfully. 
Um, yeah, and that's all we really need for that class. Um, we, if I ever come back to it, I'll add some more methods because, um, uh, yeah, because there might be sort of easier, faster ways to do it, something like that. Also, we could make the methods static, and then we wouldn't even need to create a new object of the class. Uh, but we won't do that now because we can't access this from a static context. So uh, we've got our buffered image loader, we've got our sprite sheet. Uh, so we can come back to our main method here, and I've just got this all set up. I'll post the code on the forums, link in the description. And in the initialize method, we're going to basically set up the sprite sheet. So we're going to create, uh, I've got this buffered image up here called sprite and that's going to hold the individual sprite which we're going to test so sprite sheet ss equals new sprite sheet just create a new object of it and this took a buffered image as a parameter so just above this we're going to create a new buffered image loader called loader equals new buffered image loader and then we can say a buffered image uh, called sprite sheet is equal to loader dot load image and then sprite sheet dot png because this class is within the same folder as it and if it was in a folder called images then you'd type images slash sprite sheet dot png uh, but yeah so we've got that and now we can put sprite sheet as the parameter and we're gonna need to th surround this by try and catch um, oh wait not throws um, try and catch there we go and set this equal to null because otherwise we'll get an error down here saying it's not been initialized uh, but now we've got this now we've got our sprite sheet and our images initialized we can set this sprite up here equal to something so we can say sprite is equal to ss dot grab sprite and now we need to find the x y width and height of the sprite we want to grab from this sheet so i'll do the first one um, i believe we want to i think it cuts off the layer you say i'm not sure We'll, we'll say 0, 0, and 15, 16, and 17. So 0, 0, 16, 17. 0, 0, 16, 17. And again, that's the X and Y location of the sprite on the sprite sheet in pixels. And this is the width and height, 16 and 17. So now that we've initialized the sprite in this method, and we've called it in the constructor here, and we make a new instance of it in the main method down here. Uh, in our paint method, I can now show you the grand result. Draw image, and we'll draw the sprite at 100, 100, with no image observer. And we can run this. And it doesn't appear. Let me just check this quickly. Um, maybe if we call repaint in the paint method and run it then, not to, oh, there we go. All right, so we've got our sprite loaded from our sprite sheet. Let me just add width and height so we can see it much more clearly and run this again. So as you can see, we've got our sprite successfully loaded from our whole sprite sheet. As you can see, this one here is loaded from this. And if I were to change the coordinates, if I change one of the coordinates from... All right, so if I change the Y coordinate to 18, that will shift it down one sprite. And we'll see that... Oops. One sec, let me close this. Um, oh, okay. And then we need to change that to... Fifteen. Uh, 
we can see that we have the other sprite, which is this one down here. And you can see that I kind of got some errors. I got an uh, error there or two, uh, and you kind of have to adjust it pixel by pixel to fit everything in, which is why when you make sprite sheets, uh, I recommend that you make sure each cell each cell of the sprite sheet is evenly spaced so you know exactly the right so you can fit so you can get an exact right measurement of it so that is pretty much it for this tutorial guys I hope you enjoyed this again this main method is really kind of messy this main class rather is really messy uh, because I only wanted you to show how to do these two things uh, a loader image image loader class and a uh, sprite sheet class. So in this is going to be part one. In part two I'm going to show you how to build an animator class to animate sprites from this and I'm only going to be using the simple old repaint method. We might do our double buffering which I show you from the uh, beginners game development tutorials, just the really simple double buffering. But yeah, we'll be doing that in the next tutorial. Uh, so tell me in the comments uh, if 16 minutes is too long or too short. I think it's been quite a good tutorial. Tell me if it needs to be shorter or longer or whatever. Uh, I'm going to go now, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and stick around for the next part. See ya.